Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 10.1, Exponential Functions. A lot of people get lost in exponential functions, so I say, well, what's a linear function? And most of them say, oh, that's just a straight line. Great. Now we're going to do something that's not a straight line. It goes up at a curve, and you say, well, that's just a parabola. So well, parabolas are one example. Exponential function has two examples. We'll talk about them both in a second. And you can flip it across and up and down, but here's something that grows exponentially. And here's something that decays, we call it exponentially. Uh, examples of the first one uh, would be population. More people, more babies, more babies, more people, more people, more babies, and so on and so on. Um, you could also do it with uh, amoeba uh, in a lab situation where you put them in a, a petri dish and they start to grow rapidly. Um, in the real world, there are limits, and human beings act very rashly. They don't act like amoeba, thank goodness. Decay would be uh, lots of things, uh, nuclear material. or chemical material. They decay over time. Uh, we used to have DDT in the air. Um, we sprayed it everywhere. It killed bugs. It was wonderful, but it's very bad for the environment, uh, particularly for uh, birds. It makes their eggs very fragile. Um, so they stopped spraying it, and there's you know millions of tons of it that was sprayed, but now it's slowly decayed over time and broken down into other things, so it's, it's slowly but surely going away. So there's just, just a couple of examples. Here's how we write a exponential equation. The constants are a and b, which is a little weird because the variables are actually up in the exponent where we expect to see the constant. Um, the variables are x and y. So we will use a t-chart to graph. I would rarely do a t-chart. I would much more prefer to do a calculator, but just to get the idea, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, times 4 is 1. 4 times 2 to the negative first is 4 over 2 is 2. 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. You need to work on this one. Make sure you know it. Because we say 2 to the 0 is 1, therefore we get 4. And then 8... 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16, and this is a classic example of exponential growth. Go up by 2's, and 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Just to give you a rough idea, exponential growth is interesting around the y-axis, but then it suddenly takes off and it's gone. I mean, it's, it's really hard to see. So negative 2 is here, and negative 1 is about here. And then this value, you've got to learn to say 2 to the 0 is 1, and multiply it by the a, and then it just goes. A little bit tricky to draw that curve, but it runs, runs off. So domain and range. Domain, all reals doesn't matter. You can put anything in to an exponential function. A lot of people are confused on domain. What can I put in? I can put anything in. It's not going to cause problems. It's not going to blow up my calculator or say non-real answer. Range, if you look carefully, is um, y is greater than 0. You can see this down here runs closer and closer. The y-axis is an asymptote. Now here's another one, and just in the interest of time, I am not going to do the t-chart. I'm just going to ballpark it to the 0 is 1, so it will definitely hit here at 1. And if you think about it, to the first is 1 half. So I'm going to do this right if I can. one-half 
to the second is one fourth, and the flip to the negative first is flipping the one half and making it two. And then we're going to be up here, so we'll end up doing something like this. Same range, same domain for this case. And we call this one exponential decay. It means things are getting smaller. And we get exponential decay from a less than one fraction. or a negative exponent. And you will have to play with this to figure that out. You can always put it in your calculator if you get confused. First type of graph we call exponential growth. And again, I'll let you play with that for a little bit and see where it takes you. So here's a opportunity to write an exponential equation. We're going to call 1983 year zero. And in year zero, there were 102,000 farms in Minnesota um, due to increasing yields on farms and the growing population. The number of farms is going to go down. Um, it's doing that all over the land. Some are also just consolidating. 1998 is 15 and there are 80,000. So we could just do a linear model. We have two points, but we're going to assume this is exponential decay in that you can't get rid of all the farms. People still need to eat, but they're enlarging and you're going to get less and less farms. It'll run up to some asymptotic number, but we won't go into that. So y equals a times b to the x. This is always the first set of points to put in because with the zero, you can figure out the a value because the b cancels. So 102,000 equals a times b to the 0. Well, b to the 0 is 1. Therefore, a equals 102,000. Then we come over here and do it again with these numbers, 80,000. Now we know the a, 102,000, times b to the 15th. Do a little math. b to the 15th equals 0 0.7843. Take the 15th root and we get b equals 0.7843. And we now have a model we can use. The model is y equals 0 0.9839 times, whoops, my bad, 102,000 times 0 0.9839 to the x. Put 2015 in there. Uh, we have to convert that 2015 minus 1983. And you get there should be 60,678 farms. So the number is continuing to drop, but not quite as rapidly. Because it's exponential decay, it kind of bottoms out. So, a little bit review of exponents. Uh, I made a note here, we'll use your vast <clears throat> knowledge of exponents, which always astonishes me. So you may want to pause this and try it on your own, because I'm just going to blow through them. If we're multiplying, we add, so this is just root 5 plus root 3. 
done. If we're going to a powder power, we multiply. So this is root six. Done. I always say if you're given an exponent problem, put everything in the lowest possible base. In other words, that's three to the fourth. If you don't know that, three to the fourth is eighty-one. Can't help you. Therefore, two n plus one equals four. Two n equals three. N equals three halves. Same thing over here. I actually put everything in the same base. 2 squared to the 2x equals 2 to the third to the x minus 1. 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the 3x minus 3. 4x equals 3x minus 3. x equals 3. Highly recommend checking your work at this point. In the interest of time, I'm just going to keep moving. This one gets people a little bit because they don't know what to do with that on the bottom. But you have to remember that's just 2 to the 5th. 2 to the negative 1st. So 32 to the negative 1st, 1 over 32. Meaning n plus 4 equals negative 5 n equals negative 9. I think all of this is doable. And then we have these greater than, less than, which causes kind of a lot of problems. 2 squared to the 3x minus 1 greater than 2 to the, I think it's to the 8th. Yep. 2 to the negative 8th because it's on the bottom. 2 to the 6x minus 1 is greater than 2 to the negative 8th. Now I'm guessing, because I haven't done inequalities in a while where exponents are concerned. So I think it's going to say 6x minus 1 has to be greater than negative 8. 6x greater than negative 7. x greater than negative 7, 6. Greater than negative 7, 6 is 0, so I'll try that. 4 to 0 is 1. 1 is greater than 1 over 256. Looks like it works. Lots to keep you busy here. Get to work. Good luck.